The one thing I like about crabs is that they've got a bit of a, a bite to them. A bit of a boy. A snap. A snap. With an undercutting of flavour. What, what, are we talking about crabs or are we talking about rice bubbles? Snap, cr- crackle and spock. Pop. Spock. Like pop. <laughs> pop. <laughs> Definitely pop. Oh, never mind. This is the As Yet Undecided podcast because we cannot decide whether this crab cake is um, pretentious or not. Is, it, is this pretentious enough for pretentious food corner? One, it's crab. Two, it's cake. But the thing is, it's imitation crab with, on imitation cake. Oh, well, yeah, sashimi. So sue me with cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, with, with your long live and prosperous hosts, or long live and pretentious hosts, Mike and Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so maybe while we have this cake, I should actually. Okay, I've listened to a podcast recently about pretentious food and what makes a food pretentious and why people are going into natural foods all of a sudden. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why either. Well, apparently it's because of the whole natural health movement and wanting to go back to nature after the whole industrialization and wanting to actually to go for a simpler life. Even though the food labels on those things are nothing but simple. So, for example, um, if you actually listen to the podcast, uh, what's it called? Oh, oh goodness, what's that podcast? Okay. The host, I'll just link the podcast to you guys, sorry. It's, um, it's called... I'm so sorry. But anyway, let me just grab the information and you grab a slice of that cake. Yeah, it's, cake. It, yeah it's sort of weird because it's it, 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 it looks like the dressing on this is sort of half between a Dijon yes. and a wasabi. Oh God, if it's got wasabi in it, you're eating it for me. Does someone not like green peppercorn? I hate spicy food. No, well, it's not spicy. Oh, good. Anyway, um, this this podcast called Oh, where are we? Thinking aloud. So think, and the host, um, what is his name again? Laurie. Laurie. Laurie Taylor. Anyway, the host Laurie Taylor, for the show, decided to buy some muesli and try some of it. Apparently, it's uh, vegan, paleo, non-dairy. Gluten free ancient grain. And he's like. I mean, he's quite. I mean, he's English. He's got a sardonic tone about him. And he is a bit sarcastic about it, but I think he kind of ran out of breath trying to say the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, you know, you know, when I talk about my. Um, the, the other thing besides muscle and bone. Yes. I call that 100% pure organic, um, paleo, um, GM-free insulation. <laughs> hmm. So I'm saying that. This is savoury. I have... Oh, no. We're going we to talk about the receipt first, then we'll talk about pretentious food. Okay. Should we talk about the receipt first, then? Yeah. Because that's got that out. Okay, what do you want to talk about it? I have the anyway, receipt... Anyway, this crab cake is savoury. It's basically a crab pizza. And... Mike? Yes? I have crab pizza. This is unusual crab pizza. It's basically bread. It's like savoury bread with crab and cheese on it. It's weird. It, it's, it's cold. Crab it's, pizza. Yeah, cold crab pizza. From an Asian bakery, which means the bread tastes Asian. So? What's Mike, you got a receipt? Yes, I do. For my textbook? Yes. For New Zealand land law? Yes. For my paper, real property? Yes. Now... The funny part is, mm-hmm. and, and I will critique this, and it says, paid in full, thank you. Mm-hmm. The unit price for this book mm-hmm. is $216. Yeah. Yeah. Sophie got, got it 15% off. Yeah. And then they added GST onto it, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. So you know, you know, a non—I wouldn't say a—a a person who was who did not get to university mm-hmm. would say, "Oh, you took fifteen percent off, and then you added it on, so it equal the same price." Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that? No. 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 
So what? Uh, you're adding fifteen percent on on a, from a smaller price. So what you're doing, uh, you know, mathematically, mm. you are adding eighty. You are adding fifteen percent to an eighty-five percent item, mm -hmm. which will make it da, 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 seven eighths of the price. Oh. No, wait. No, eight ninths of the price. Oh, really? So it's not quite there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, wait. No, you're adding a seventh of the price of the 85%, which comes to 99.4%. I actually, I thought I paid 210 for it, did I? Well, you did. Mm -hmm. You paid $211, but it's not 216 yeah, 216 was the price I would have paid if I went to the U to the university bookshop. Yes, so you got 15% off that, and then you got 15% in tax, which was 99.4% of the price. Oh my goodness, I paid tax. I am a taxpayer! Hmm. Wait. Wait, everyone is. Yeah, we all are, even babies. Yeah, but you paid for that. You paid for the pretentious food. You just didn't ask for a receipt. Oh, yes. So 99.4% of $216 is $211.14. Mike, um, do, you, do you mind um, having a bit of an unusual guess? Of what? Ray might be coming in. Oh. Um, but as always... Um, we will wait. We will wait because considering that you guys, you, you know, you guys are not very punctual when it comes to these sort of things. Mm -hmm. How many books do you have this, this semester? Not that many. Not that many? No. Um, let's see. Really? I'm a little bit shocked about that. Yeah, well, it turns out most of my law studies, most of my law textbooks are actually statutes and acts one can get for free. From the New Zealand government. Yeah. As well as the stuff they already have on Arian. Uh, no, Blackboard. As well as the stuff they the, the teachers have already uploaded on Blackboard. So I only need to buy two textbooks this semester. Well, that's good. Um, uh, I know, it's a huge saving. Yeah, and less room. Oh my, oh my goodness. Um, I have a terrible problem when it comes to carting books around. And the fact they need less books is just a godsend now. Um, do you mind if I have some more juice? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Have the rest, Sophie. Really? Yeah. Someone's a little bit parched for, for a person who's had a day off. I know. Ugh. Yeah, it's the fee -jower. No, no, no. I think I actually got a bit of um, 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 nail polish in there. Yay. fee just tastes weird. I never quite got to it. But anyway, anyway, so what do you want to talk about with the receipt? No, well, considering that... I won't know until tomorrow if I need a textbook at all. Why don't they tell you? Because they haven't brought out the handbook out yet. Why not? I don't know. Don't worry, the, the lecturer is like this. You know the lecturer? Yeah. Have you... Have you paid for the course? Got it. Well, you know, take not just shoot loan for it. Yeah, I know. But oh, well, if, if, you already pay, if they already received money for it from you, yeah, well, then I'll they have to let you in. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. They will, they, they've let me in. Yeah. But they haven't brought out any res resources on the page yet. Yeah. So I'm like, it's like, it's it's typical this lecture, but oh, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, nothing is more comforting than getting billed for the papers you want to take <laughs> because it shows that you actually are through. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a sort of strange confirmation that you have indeed passed your previous papers and that you've indeed are allowed to go into third part three or part four of whatever paper you're taking. Yeah, so, so in saying that, um, William is a very comforting guy. William? Yeah. With that, with that being said, talking about bills, um, Obama's coming. Yes. In March. Yes, he is. Um, which than, means, that, of course, he will visit Bill English. No, no, more than likely. Yeah. He will be playing golf with John, John Key. Key. And visiting our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. Yes. So, but, Ardern. But, in, but in saying that, there's another pressing matter. Yeah. Um, will you be going to a night with Hillary Clinton in May? 
Is she coming here? Yeah. I guess she has something to do. I think she needs to do something when <laughs> Trump is, you know, luxuriating his fat ass on the throne. Orange. Fat orange. <laughs> fat orange ass on the throne. I mean, yeah. yes, well, if she's coming in March, she's coming May, right? Yeah, she's doing a night somewhere in Auckland. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you think she'll be able to run the next elections? Or should you, is she oh, no, 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 she'll, she'll give up. Mich- Michelle Obama's throwing her hat into the ring. Oh, but there's a lot of people throwing the hat, but, you yeah. know, it, it all depends. She still wants to wear the hat True. in a couple of years' time. Yeah, well, what are the chances, do you think, of Trump getting impeached before that happens? Uh, no idea. No idea either, but we are getting irrefutable evidence, so to speak. Oh, yeah, of course. That... You know, Russia. (laughs) Yeah, of course, but there's a difference between evidence and, you know, things actually happening. Yes, so if you guys don't know, Slash been living under a rock, Slash living in a fallout shelter and just came out to see what's happening. Or Trump Tower. Okay. (laughs) If you're listening at this in Trump Tower, I'm telling you this right now, there is now irrefutable evidence found by the FBI that... Trump has indeed been meddling with the Russians, and the Russians have indeed been meddling with U.S. elections. Yeah, well, yep. This sounds a lot like Watchdogs. Yeah, a little, a, a wee bit, a wee, little bit. Like Watchdogs. Yep. But say, Nip, are, are you excited? About what? About American leaders coming to New Zealand. Decent American leaders coming to New Zealand? Well, Joe Biden was here two years ago, oh. but that I was mean, that, that was an overnight thing. Why do you think Obama's coming to New Zealand? Is he? Is he? Is he? Is this like a family trip? It's like, it's like a, well, was it friends trip? No, it's it, it's more like. Uh, we're sorry for Trump trip. No, 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 no. More like you know with um, with singers when they have their hit single. Yes. And, and then they do all the popular venues yeah. in the US. And then w- when it dies down, then they do their world tour. Oh, yeah. It always seems that it's like that for dignitaries as well. I see. So now Obama's going to visit the places he wanted to visit. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Anyway, so it's actually quite interesting how he's visiting both, the, you know, the leaders from both sides of the parties, from both sides of parliament, so to speak. Of course. So... Okay, John Key, that's understandable because John Key seems to be quite well liked by every single world leader. Pretty much. So it's like he seems to be friends with every one of them. So it's like... No, yeah, it's it's because we have the mentality that we try and be as unbiased as we can. Yeah. But we would call out your BS. Yeah, so same with with Helen Clark apparently. Like, um... Well, the, thing, well, the interesting thing about New Zealand politics is that we're only big rivals within Parliament itself. And outside of that, opposition leaders will support each other. So, for example, when Helen, when Helen Clark wanted to become the leader of the UN, John Key supported her. Yeah. Even though they were huge political rivals back in 2008. Yeah. You know, it's outside of New Zealand, so... We're Kiwi still. Yeah. So same so it's probably going to be the same here with Justin the Ida. So it's like, yeah, well as you know, we just keep the fight we just kill keep the toddler fights within Parliament. You get Justin the Ida is apparently a lovely lady and she's like, she has this sort of odd charm about her. She's hypnotic in a way. It, it, because every single every single person that seem, that meets her seems to like her for some odd reason. It, it, it's it's a form of respect. Yeah. Um like most of my um, golfing rivals that yeah. I had throughout the years. Yes. Are the ones that I respect the most. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you, you know, I'm very gracious in defeat when it comes to those sort of things. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, we respect the hustle. Yeah. And we, 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 we respect the battle. But outside of the battle... Keep the fights in the battlefield. Yes. Outside of it, it's none of your business and... A do you want to hear a funny story about Jacinda Ardern? What? Okay, so, as you guys know, I went to Motat the other day, and I met a few of the volunteers. So, mm-hmm. well, I mean, I've actually met this guy called David, and he really, really wants me to volunteer at Motat. He's been there for, like, ages upon ages. Yeah. But, anyway. Uh, he, Jacinda Ardern became the 
MP for Mount Roskill, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so he lives in Mount Roskill and he's like, yeah, um, I'm not a keen Labour supporter because you guys have a bad habit of not living up to your promises and da 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 And therefore, um, just an idea, now that you're my MP, what are you going to do to actually um, prove that you're going to be a decent leader? You know, it was actually quite an inflammatory letter. I mean, it was fair critique, but it wasn't exactly what you call nice. True. And so just I then received the letter, read through it, have a thought, muse about it, and went to his place. Knocked on his door and said hi. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, um, sorry, hello, hello. Hi, Ray. Kia ora. Kia ora. We have a special guest, Ray. How do you say your last name? Casson. Hello, Ray Casson. He is now our special guest. You have to sit here, I'm afraid. Um, it's, yeah. Was all yeah, so we were talking. We were just talking about Jacinda Arden and how she says an odd child. Anyway, so she went. She went to David's place and said, oh, "Okay, about your letter. This is what we're going to do." Da 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 da. Fifty fifty two promises done in fifty two weeks. Da 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 da. And then in the end, he became a Labour supporter. Yeah, he was very impressed. Good, insane there. Yeah. yeah. Since we have a guest here, how are you, Ray? Pretty good. Pretty what do you study? Music. You have to come in close, and the microphone is oh. here. Study so, music. Yeah, thing is, Mark's going to be loud, I'm going to be loud, you're going to be quiet. Okay. So if you don't, yeah. if you sit, if you sat too far, that's the problem. Oh, we have right. balancing issues. Yeah. Yeah. How it makes me quiet. We have balancing issues, so we need you to be louder. So 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 yeah. So when you're studying music, where? Auckland He's not university. in university. Or can you? Yeah, university of Auckland. I don't want to interrupt what you guys are doing. No, you're a special guest. Come on. So so we have a little drummer boy. We have a little lawyer, and a little potential politician. And, now on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, shall we talk about the sociology behind pretentious food? Well, considering that, you know, um, I, 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 I am with two people that come from very pretentious suburbs. Yes. Yeah, so it's, so it's like... I'm from Epsom. Yeah. Which Haven isn't pretentious at all. West Haven is more pretentious than Paitia. Yeah. Definitely. We say, I said B2. Beach Haven is more pretentious than, than Piety, yeah. put it this way. Yeah. We have a class difference, in other words. Yeah. So Which like, is really weird because, like, I thought New Zealand was supposed to be egalitarian, but no, it isn't. No. That's, that's one of the biggest myths. I mean, we're, we're, less ega- we're less inegalitarian than most other countries, but we still have a bit of a class system, and I find that disturbing. Yes, and, and a culture problem. I know. Yeah. Like I always say, you know, you know, people inside the sociology realm, that just because Auckland is multicultural doesn't mean that New Zealand is. True. I have to admit, we have our problems. Yeah. But maybe it's just acknowledgement that we're not perfect and we have something to work on. Correct. And we don't need to make a giant fuss about it. We just need to keep on working about. It. We just need to keep on working on the problem. Yeah. Did right. Yeah. Well done. Two. Well. Um, I, I, I now present the MP, new MP for Epsom, Sophie Zang. <laughs> You're kidding, right? David Seymour is going to have a seat until his bones turn to dust. I am not going to become the next MP until David Seymour becomes... Okay, here's the problem. There is a slight chance that even if David Seymour was taxidermied, he'll still be the new MP for Epsom above me, over me. Think about these people and, you know, see what they have in common. Don Brash. Yeah. Rodney Hyde. Yeah. David Seymour. Sophie Zane. Well, goodness. <laughs> well, all goodness. <laughs> yeah. You will go with that. <laughs> That's like, we're all from rich countries, that we're all being MPs of Epsom or Epsomites? Yeah, or here, or Epsomites. Or Eps- oh, okay. In English, you're saying that we're all pretentious people. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe you lumped me in with those three middle-aged white men. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, I forgot one. What? Colin Craig. <laughs> <laughs> no. The, 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 this is what you call a legal joke by me. No. <laughs> Don't love me with the Colin Craig. He's nasty. He wants me back in the kitchen. Sorry. I want to study law. And he's like, no, you have to go back and cook some bellamies for me. So, you, you, you know, you know, since, since we have the guest here, I want to throw out some names at him to, to associate with him with others. Okay. Colin Craig. Yeah. Murray McCulley. Paula Barnett. 
the lead singer from Midnight Oil. Who's Australian? Yeah, who, who's an Australian MP in Queensland. Mm. And Ray Chasm. <laughs> They're, They're all part of the band, weren't they? You, were you part of the band? Yeah. 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 You guys, those people were all part of the band. Probably. Yeah. Except for Paula Bennett, who, you know, she claims she is the band. We got what Wait, is it Paula Bennett wanting to be the next um, national? No. No. It's Judy Collins. It's it's Collins, Adams, Joyce, Bridges, Mitchell. How many of those are women? Three. Is it entirely possible that we're oh, soon, two. two of two. them are women? Is it is it entirely possible that Parliament will soon be led by two white women? More than likely, yes. Yeah, we're we'll we'll basically the only country in the world where both the leaders in power and in the opposition will be women. Well, well, let's just say. I'm going, well... It was maybe not, maybe no, I lied, maybe we're not the only country, but maybe we'll be like one of the first Western countries to have two women in... Um, yeah. Like I said, when Bill English yeah. resigned, yeah. I, I picked this particular leader, uh, this particular person to be the leader, and I'm sorry to say, it's between the other person and my dark horse. What's your dark horse? Amy Adams. Amy Adams, and who's the... Simon Bridges. Simon Bridges versus Amy Adams, okay. Yeah. And um, another interesting thing about New Zealand women and politics is that although a third of women make up parliament, they also tend to take the more powerful positions. So you either go hard or go home <laughs> if, you're women, if you're a woman in New Zealand parliament. So do, so do you think that men need to get, have more power in parliament? No, they just need to get their acts together. The act party needs to get the act together for one thing. No, no, I'm actually just saying that to deliberately bomb it, Sophie. Oh, nice. <laughs> anyway, so right at this moment, New Zealand, for the second time in its history, has, has the trifecta of power given to women. So you have a female prime minister, a female um, head of justice, as well as a female... No. No, a female governor general, a female prime minister, as well as a female oh, head judge. Yes. Yes. We'll go with that. Yeah, so so you have Sean Elias, Jacinda Ardern, and we recently, in September, got a new um, governor general. And I can't remember who, I can't remember and, who she is. And, and also um, the Human Rights Commissioner. Is no. a woman. Yep. What? Are, you saying, are you saying that white women are dominating parliament? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's all yeah. amazing power. Um, yeah. Like I do question yeah. the, the, the you know the human rights commissioner because it is who she is. Who is she? Um, ex um, world champion squash player. And that kind of makes her bad. No, I'm like I don't know. The only thing I know about you is the squash thing, so I'm like I can't really judge. I see. Yeah. Interesting how you say that. Anyway, I think we should we sign off now. Yes, we should. We should. We should click the sign out button on our um, hotmail. Yeah. Yeah. This has been the As Yet Undecided podcast. You may contact Mike on the Manus. If if you want to make a folder for Sophie, you can make her on at Sophie nine seven zero nine, or you may contact us on as at as no. As your undecided podcast at gmail.com or at AYU podcast at AYU podcast. And, and, and just don't um, put us in the trash. Please don't. <laughs>